All right, welcome back to Sunrise Daily. We're coming to you live from Kaduna, where the Cadinvest 6.0 is holding today. And now we've got uh, uh, Hafiz Bayero, who is the MD, Kaduna Market Development and Management Company. Good morning. Thank you for coming on today. Good morning. Thank you for having me. I mean, yeah, I mean, normally one wonders market development and management. What's the concept behind this? Well, basically, it's just uh, the development of commercial spaces of different types. You go from the lowest rate, which is open stalls in markets, uh, all the way to malls. Uh, it's all about providing traders and customers uh, safe spaces, affordable spaces, modern spaces where they can trade. Uh, goods and services. I, I know that usually, well, of course, you have goals and targets. Is this limited to specific areas at the first instance or the entire country, uh, state, as it were? Well, of course, uh, you are aware of the Kaduna Urban Renewal Program, yeah. uh, which seeks to look at our urban areas and renew them and make them look uh, uh, fit for the times that we're in now. Uh, cities have to be livable. You know, there's uh, this concept of livable cities, and this is what Governor Nasser Rafai is doing. So we, coming from the commercial aspect, if you look at even land, the three basic classification of land when you have it is residential, commercial, or other mixed use. Um, so commercial activities are very important. They drive the economy, and particularly in urban areas, this is what you have uh, driving the economy, and there is need to provide uh, recognized spaces, not just anywhere. We, we want to ensure that anybody who wants to trade uh, has a place that is fit for that purpose. You know, for, for some, uh, what their model will be the market management, manage infrastructure, the, the, the company can manage infrastructure and then leave the market to some other agency. But market management and infrastructure, I think you're combining both. What's yeah, the we're building, but of course, when it comes to the management, we outsource these services. We're a company, even though we're a government owned company, we're not a government agency. We are a company, so we have to make profit. Uh, so, of course, we ensure that we uh, provide them with uh, any of the hubs that we commercial hub that we build, whether it is a mall or the smallest, like I said, open stalls, they must have services. And they pay for these services through what is called the service charge. And uh, we provide sanitation, security, uh, you know, um, uh, and other services that is required to run those spaces. From that kind of revenue that we get, we are able to now uh, get people from the private sector because we don't have the capacity. And even if we did, we'd be wasting our time. You know, no company would want to be engaged in a, um, you know, being the cleaners of all these things. It's just like British Airways. Yeah. They don't necessarily have to cook their meals or be the ones cleaning. They can outsource those services. So this is precisely what we do. So I'm wondering what the transition was like, because essentially we know what our markets are, you know, in general, regardless of where you go in the country, and now trying to transition to the more organized, uh, service-oriented, proper markets, whether be they open stores or be they, uh, you know, closed malls. What was the transition like for the state and for the people of the state? Uh, well, it, w it was quite challenging at the beginning when we embarked on this program, uh, but the governor was very clear this is what he wanted us to do. Uh, had a mandate two years ago in 2019, um, and we set about uh, doing this. Of course, we had to do several stages of stakeholder engagement but even with that you know of course people are not used to uh, just this kind of drastic change and we're so set in our ways uh, particularly maybe here in Kaduna and they found it very very inconveniencing but of course for every market that we've had to remove what they don't tell you is that we have provided um, uh, alternative uh, places for them where we've built up uh, temporary stalls for everyone that was in that market before to go in there and continue trading up until the time we conclude the construction of whatever market we're doing. Because uh, most of these markets are neighborhood markets, some are district markets. So if you take out the markets, you are not even, it's not even the traders that you are after, it's about the whole community. We cannot deprive any community of that um, um, right to go to any market and buy what they want to buy or that convenience of having 
a place where they can exchange uh, value for goods. Uh, I'm going to ask you, when you were given the task, did you, did you laugh? Did you, I mean, what was your initial reaction? Um, did you see yourself as going to be a bad guy? I mean, <laughs> Well, I knew I had to be a bad guy, and um, I'm ready to do that. You see, when you're public, uh, when you're in public uh, service, you don't worry about perception that much because you are there to make uh, policies that will affect the lives of millions of people. Uh, people say, oh, you, sometimes people walk up to me and say, what you are doing is good. People that I've never met, and they will see it in the future. Honestly, I know what I'm doing is good. The, the, the governor knows what we're doing is good. And whatever we're doing, we put it through a very robust debate at council. We just don't arrive at these decisions uh, when we wake up in the morning. We debate it and weigh the merits and demerits. But you see, a society must move forward. We cannot remain stagnant. And but we have to. How are they, because I mean, change is not easy to accept for a lot of people. How is that coming on, this new strategy you implemented? Well, in the first year, it was very difficult. Like Maupay said, it was very, very difficult um, having to deal with them. I was probably public enemy number one in Kaduna. <laughs> <laughs> but over time, you know, sometimes I receive letters in my office, commendation letters, because they are beginning to see these structures coming. It's all about how people value themselves, you know, because they've been told that you're supposed to remain in this rundown shack, all these muddy areas. You do not deserve to run your business in conducive environments. And we don't believe that is fair. Well, oftentimes, sorry, Kadi, no. the, the fear oftentimes is that when these modern markets are built, the traders who yeah. used to be there are kicked out. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes they cannot afford the new markets. How are you able to you know, bridge that and also ensure that you assure old timers that don't worry, this is still your market. When you come back, you will still be able to afford the services in this market. Well, um, when we started, this was uh, the governor's first um, directive to be to ensure that we uh, make sure the people that are coming back to these markets are the same uh, people that were there before. Uh, let me give you an example. What we do typically is if we remove a market that has 2,100 occupants before, we ensure that we build at least 3,500 so that we bring back the 2,100 and even bring new people in. With markets, as we know them, if you take out the original people, it never really goes well. We've seen cases before we got here. Uh, but we have cases like in Savangari where we uh, removed the market and we've built the first phase of about 1,211 shops. All the people that are there are the same people that were there before. Of course there were those suspicions, but now we've had um, first phases of most markets completed. They've seen that these are really the people going back in and, and uh, there's this sense of uh, belief and saying, okay, this is really for real. We've never had it good this way and uh, we believe that uh, what the governor said initially is uh, what is happening. But beyond that also, I want to just quickly say that what we try to do is we register them. Like uh, you have market unions because what we do is we collect lists from the local government and the market unions say, give us the list of those who were in this market before we took it out. Or oh, we're about to take this market out. Can we have the list of people? Sometimes you have inflated lists. Some people will bring 3,600, but because we subject them to verification, biometric verification, we find out that they are normally, typically, 60 to 70 percent of the population uh, of, of the people the on the list. list. Yes, <laughs> but we, we don't mind. Why are they inflating the list? Because <laughs> they just want to. If your name is Musa Ibrahim, they now write it Ibrahim Musa, and they will put Ibrahim dot M or M dot Ibrahim or Musa dot I. So, but yeah, so we <laughs> we have a way of verifying these things. And you know what we're doing is beyond just building markets. We're building the traders themselves. We're doing tax clearance certificates for them. We're registering them under the RRE, Cadenasi Residency Registration Agency, which gives them, offers them some social services for free. Very soon you have to show those cards to be able to access those social services. We are registering business names for them because they don't have to have uh, just a business name is okay for them at least, maybe something ventures. Uh, we're doing all these things, we're formalizing them in the process. And let me tell you why this became necessary. We had COVID last year, uh, and the federal government, of course, put out so, so many different kind of funds for people to access. But you would realize that a lot of our traders, when we tried to get them to access, because we set up centers, we tried to support them to recover, because COVID really hit our traders here, particularly in Kaduna and maybe northern Nigeria. Um, so we realized that they didn't have all these documents to even commence the, 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 the application. And I'm talking of 10 million naira, 20 million naira money that will change 
uh, their businesses, money that will get, see them employ more people, money that will see the volume of trade increase significantly. But we are losing that because we did not formalize our traders. So we've gone through that process. Today in Kaduna, you cannot own a shop until you have ticked all these boxes. And we do them all for free. I, for I hope those monies have been dispersed now. Well, um, I, I, I said they are federal government money, not, uh, not KDSG, so right. I wouldn't know. Um, but some of them that applied, that had all those things, they've, they've gotten their money. Yeah. That takes me to the next, this next question. So there's the, the conversation about I mean, making the markets better, ensuring quality of service and the rest. But for the government as well, there's a talk about generating revenue. And I'd like to know just how profitable has this been for government? Because that's a very important conversation as well. Well, people uh, especially ask me that, how do you, how, because you see most of these markets that we actually build, well, we don't really invest government money in it. The Kasoma Ghani case is a different case. That's government money purely going in. But most of these markets, particularly in the urban areas, are done through public-private partnership. The land is vested in our company's name, the governor, and then we value the land and that is our own equity. And then we invite private sector developers who come in and put their money to erect the structures. And then we have a sharing agreement. But for us, we are not so much worried about what we make, but providing the spaces for people. But just to answer your question, market um, development is very, very profitable. You know, we have seen um, the, in the state development plan, which will be launched today, the target for Kaduna Market's Development and Management Company was 11 billion naira in private sector investments. We've tripled that in two years, uh, not even over the four years. We've, we've gotten um, all, almost all the markets, apart from Kaswama, and I'm talking of 21 different types of commercial hubs, so are all on the PPP. What is different about the Kaswama Ghani? Because you understand the VP will be commissioning that as well. Yes, the Kaswama Ghani case is different because, as you know, that was the first uh, uh, place where ethno religious crisis started in Kaduna. People don't know that it's actually at that market. And uh, in 2018, and we've had several cases after that recurring. Um, where, in Kajuru. Yes, in Kajuru. That is the first place where the first ethno religious crisis started in Kaduna in the early 80s, 1981 or thereabouts. And um, uh, we realized that we've had so many of these crises around that area, surrounding the market, burning of markets. The first thing they do is to go and burn the market. The last one was in October 2018, and the governor said, look, we demolish this market completely and build a brand new market, build as many shops as possible, so we can allow anybody and everyone that wants to own a shop there to own a shop. We are also, if, you know, the way we allocate the shop, we are doing it in such a way that ensures integration of different tribes, you know, a particular tribe next to a particular tribe. So if you burn the market, you are also burning your own shop. So because the, 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 the issue surrounds, um, the issue there is usually about exclusion. Some people say they are economically excluded in uh, Kajuri because they are not part of the market or they don't have a stall in the market. So now we've built something that is modern, that is uh, big enough to take anybody and anyone who wants a market there. So um, this is why um, the state government decided to invest directly in a Kaswa Magani market. It is not so much about the money coming out of that market, but everything about ensuring peaceful coexistence. Uh, and you look at that market, I mean, there will be uh, at the slaughterhouse, and, I mean, a lot of things around meat and all that. And I understand that there's, there's talks also about Damao Ranch project. You represent the state on that one. What are the prospects, really? Well, uh, like the governor said a few days ago in one of his interviews in Abuja, we have 14 grazing reserves, and if we could, we'd turn all of them to uh, ranches because we, we believe in this ranching thing. We believe that, uh, just like I said in the building markets and making traders aware that they need conducive spaces, it will drive more people to come into the market and purchase stuff. It's the same way that we believe that if you are able to sedentarize these farmers in a location where byproducts of cattle are being utilized. So it's just not beef. We're talking of cheese, we're talking of milk primarily. We want to cut down on our importation of milk, yet we have so many cows roaming around. And when cows go up and down, they tend to lose that um, ability to produce milk. So if you put them in a location 
you give them, you plant the necessary grass that they need or the food that they require, you ensure that the people, herders that are taking care of them, have um, clinics, have schools so that their children can go there. It is an entire community of about 8,000 hectares in Damo, in Kubo local government, where we plan to uh, sedentarize at least 1,000 cattle farmers. We will get them, the state will um, get them the cattle, the, the Frisian cows. Uh, we will have some sort of breeding with the local cows that they currently own and then see how much milk they can produce. The goal is to increase the yield of milk production. And we are partnering with Allah, a dairy giant, one of the top three dairy giants in the, the, in the world. Uh, they will set up their own center of excellence, about 200 hectares within that farm, to actually collect the milk. They will tell them how to look after their cows so that they can produce the milk. They will collect the milk. They will have a milking parlor, uh, process the milk further, and then take it out of the farm and to a processing plant where they can package and sell all over, not only Nigeria, but West Africa. So this is partly finding an economic solution to conflicts that we have seen. Okay. Preci precisely. I don't see any reason why at this day and age we, we still have people going up and down. We, I believe that governments at all levels must come together to find a, a permanent solution to this. And in Kaduna, the governor is leading the way. He has made this very clear. And we are working day and night to ensure that this becomes a reality. We have invested a lot of money and we are going to invest even more uh, through the CBN Commercial Agriculture Credit Scheme Program to, to sedentarize these farmers, uh, collect the milk, cheese. At the end of the um, uh, life cycle, we can, even the beef is not lost, we can still uh, use it and sell it and they can make money. This money goes to the uh, farmers directly, so they are being empowered. Their kids get to go to school, they have access mm -hmm. to clinics, they have markets, they have a community that um, that is um, that caters to their needs. Well, they make money from their country. All right, then uh, Hafiz Bayero, the managing director of Kadido Market Development and Management Company. Thank you for your time today. Thank you very much. All right, then. Well, yeah, we we'll still have some uh, more ground to cover, so don't go away.